Peace. This is G1. This is Rod Stars. And together we are Rebel Dion's. And we coming at you live again from the South Bronx with a new episode of And You Don't Stop. This week, we have Claudia touching on immigration. Rod Stars hitting the streets of New York to ask the people about immigration reform. And we have the amazing Panamanian Oakland duo Los Racas on Rooftop Live. Can we get this party started? Can we get this party started? Speaking of Los Racas, we were at their concert at Webster Hall and it was crazy. It was a raca party. At one moment, I was like, is this a mixtape? Because that's how badly they were killing it. Women dancing, brothers dancing, a good time. It was an amazing experience to be able to share with them, see how they connected with a, such a broad and diverse audience. You had people that spoke Spanish, English, Spanglish, people that spoke none of those languages, and all of them jamming to their global hip hop sound. For this week's El Reporte, Claudia went and had an in-depth conversation with Marco Saavedra, a young immigration activist who's been making rounds all over after he self-deported to get an inside look of what's going on in the ICE detention centers. More than ever, we are having the conversation on a national level of children on the border in cages because they've come here looking for a better way of life. Well, last year, um, you, you had a whole lot of coverage because you were one of a group of young people who self-deported to Mexico. Can you tell us why you did that? The vast majority, 11 million undocumented immigrants are still living in the shadows. So we wanted to raise awareness and raise our voice about that and to show that through community organizing, we could not only fight deportations here on the U.S. side, but also help bring some folks back that had already been deported. When you crossed the border, you were detained. Mm -hmm. We were detained for two weeks. Um, and yeah, so we also have deported to Mexico or reconnected with the folks that had been deported to Mexico. And there we got like a legal orientation about how we were going to ask to be paroled back into the U.S. All of us kind of prepared our own packets and then we presented ourselves as a group with our documentation saying like we want asylum from Mexico and the U.S. And that gave us the window to stay here and then for the community to support to help us while we were detained for two weeks. And we know that we need a community to support because to get asylum from Mexico is super hard. I think it's like three or four percent of people that, that ask for asylum get it from Mexico. We know that you are a political activist who has been working around the issue of immigrant rights and your work has been linked to the dreamers movement. You're an active dreamer. What does it mean to you to be linked, connected, doing work with, with this movement? I just learned by example of leaders with that were also my age doing the same thing that I'm doing now. Um, so that's how it started and then I think that I'm I'm glad that it's been, the movement has shifted a little bit, like not so much towards like dreamers only, but also like to families and also to highlight the outrageous number of deportations that are at a record number currently. And so obviously, like it, it makes sense that maybe it started with dreamers, maybe because we know the language more, maybe we've had more, uh, our parents have been able to put us through school or some of us put ourselves through school and we've just had more time here in the U.S. But I think it's definitely great to see that it's, we're, we're as a group learning that it's about the community and not just like about this one specific fragment of the immigrant population. So William the Comedian, we're out here, we're in, in, in Spanish Harlem in El Barrio, right? Right, right um, here in El Barrio. So, so, toda so today, um, what we do, it's all going down for sure. Yeah. What we do is we, we, we bring hashtags to the streets. Right. And today we're talking about immigration. Legalization or deportation? Excuse me? Legalization or deportation? Do you got a good hearing? Let me tell me again, I want to hear it again. Legalization! Legalization, legalization, no deportation. You know why? It costs the country money. Get them a job. No more hamburgers. No more hamburgers. No more hamburgers. Everybody should get equal rights. They should not be judging upon what country you came from or what race or religion or sexuality you want. For a better life, you know. Because if you do a travel, like in my country, Bangladesh, you know, people are suffering there. There's no job there, so there's no life social security. So people even sometimes risk their life to, you know, to get into USA or like England, like in a Western country, just for a better life. So this is no crime to, you know, get a better life. Lo único que hay atrasos es en el Congreso. 
eso es el problema, porque desde el presidente, él le toca decir sí o no, nada más. Legalización, porque aunque estamos aquí, trabajamos, pagamos los impuestos y también contribuimos al sistema. Entonces, no estamos nomás porque sí, no, todos trabajamos. O sea, yo tengo tres hijos, pero yo trabajo, mi esposo trabaja y no dependemos del sistema. Aunque él sea el... deje uno la familia, padres, ma, o sea, todo. Tal vez la vida aquí es un poco mejor que la que uno tiene allá. Uh, legalization, because most, most land people that come here, most immigrants that come here, they come here to work hard. And they bring money to the economy. A lot of people don't want to work for, for low wages. They do. We cook. We wash dishes, we do construction, we do everything. So why do people complain? They're hardworking people. They really don't want welfare. I think legalization is better because of the fact that there are so many immigrants in this country that it wouldn't help just to like deport them all because you'd lose a large percentage of you know the workforce of this place. And by legalizing them, you give them more opportunities and more opportunities for this country. Peace to y'all brothers, man. Thank y'all for being here. Thank so much love, us. you know what I mean? We having y'all repping the, the West Coast here with us in the South Bronx. So we, we blessed, blessed to have y'all presence, man. So share a little bit with the people about who are Los Racas, the music that y'all doing, and what the Racas movement is about. Man, Los Racas is two kids that are from Panama that grew up in Oakland, California, and started doing music there, you know? Our style is, is very unique. It's all kinds of genres of music. A lot of people know us by doing like dance hall and, and hip hop and stuff like that, but we have evolved it into doing other kind of styles of music, you know? And uh, it just keeps growing. Uh, Los Rockas is a good time, you know? You come to you come to the show, you're gonna have a rocker party. Los Rockas is, is, is the future of America, the third generations of, of Latinos that speak English, and understand both cultures, the American culture and the Latino culture. And then the reason why we decided to call ourselves Los Racas, you know, in Panama, was used as a, as a, as a negative uh, way of calling people from the, from the uh, lower income community, you know what I mean? So we decided to, to, to use that, that, that word and show to the world that yes, because you come from the, from the ghetto, from the hood, doesn't mean that you're a bad person or you're a negative person, you know what I mean? And that's the reason why we decided to call ourselves Los Racas. Tell me a little bit about uh, this, this latest video that you guys put out. It's called Sueño Americano. Um, it's a powerful, powerful video that, you know, even just talking about it right now, my, I get goosebumps. Yeah. Right on, right on. And um, so share a little bit about, about what that video was um, and how it reflects your immigrant experience. Um, and not only your immigrant experience, but the immigrant experience of other young people like yourselves that have grown up uh, here in the U.S. Yeah, definitely, man. You know, we did that, that video and that song just to show to, to the people in America, you know, like, for example, me, when I came to the United States, you know, I, my, my vision of the United States was like, everything is cool over there. You're doing everything is fine, man. We get the money, you know what I mean? Uh, and everything is positive. But it's a, it's a great country, but it's definitely got, got his flaws, you know what I mean? So we wanted to show that on that, on, on, on that video, just when the, video, when the people... Uh, yeah, so, so it's spread to Latin America, and when the people want to come over here, they, they have a good understanding of, of what's America like, you know? It's not all pretty, you know what I mean? And that's what we're showing in that video. We're showing the consequences of what can happen if you make these choices, you know? like. If you watch the video, you know, it's, it's tragic what happens, you know. But you gotta watch the video, I'm not gonna tell you, right, you know. Right, right, yo. And that's uh, Sueño Americano, man. It's, 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 it's the struggle of today. I could relate to it. He was an immigrant, you know, for 12 years in this country before he got to see his mother, you know. And I was born here. I was born in California. But the reason I could relate is because all of my families are immigrants, you know. So I get to see the struggle and I get to see uh, all of the good things that I have that they, they, they like, I could go back to Panama anytime I want. And they can't. Sueño Americano.
Dice, dice, ah, uh, estos manos no conocen nada de mí. Ni saben lo que te ni lo que se para vivir. La vida ven a América, no ves como creí. Ni ven como pienso lo que no viven aquí. Es dura, con bastón es Panamá. Que si no tienes algo, vuelve si no te lo da. Hasta si quieres algo, tú lo tienes que buscar. Y si no hay trabajo, entonces tienes que pecar. Porque renta es cara, la ley es mala. Sin papeles, tú no eres nada. Ni como humanos te tratan Este es un mensaje para toda mi raza uh, Nada es como antes Las cosas han cambiado para hay que echar balance uh, Yo soy inmigrante Y se me trata a mí como si soy maleante Dice, nada es como antes Las cosas han cambiado para hay que echar balance uh, Yo soy inmigrante Y se me trata a mí como que hey, hey. Sueño americano es el sueño americano, sueño americano, es el sueño americano. Las circunstancias me limitan, no puedo ir para college porque no tengo mi green card. Ando sin trabajo, vi la mente negativa, trabajando lo que sea para llegar hacia la cima. ¿Tú me entiendes? Ya no soy el mismo joven inocente. América me convirtió en delincuente, porque ando con los manes que roban y venden. Tomando, fumando, actuando indecente. Y mi mamá está cansada, ayer me llamó, dice que no puede más. Que a Dios todo el día le reza, para que me vaya bien y nunca me vaya mal. Y los ojos se me empiezan a aguar, me necesita y ni la puedo ayudar. Perdóname mamá, cuando voy a un rico vamos a darle la fama con lana. Uh, nada es como antes, las cosas han cambiado pero hay que echar balance. Yeah, yo soy inmigrante y se me trata a mí como si soy maliance. Uh -huh. Nada es como antes, las cosas han cambiado pero hay que echar Balance. Yeah. Yo soy inmigrante y se me trata a mí como que ay, ay. Sueño americano, ese sueño americano Esto es eh, sueño americano, uh -huh. es el sueño americano uh. Es el sueño americano Yeah, sueño americano, uh, es el sueño americano. Yeah, sueño americano, uh, es el sueño americano. Vigo, para toda mi gente allá en Sudamérica, ¿tú sabes cuál es la que es? Los racks en el área. Uh. Así.